Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we are talking about Unreal Engine. Why are we talking about Unreal Engine? Well, that is because Unreal Engine 4.23 was just released. So, uh, we're going to jump in and take a look at the release notes, what's in this major feature. But first off, we're going to start with some eye candy. And what you see running in the background is actually footage from GDC 2019, demonstrating the new Chaos Physics and Destruction system. And this is, again, probably the marquee feature of this new release, so why am I not demonstrating it firsthand? Well, first off, I need some time to get up to speed with it and second you actually have to build it from scratch you actually build uh, your unreal engine from github to actually enable this functionality there's some instructions on that and we'll get back to that in just a second but as you can see from this video um, it is the, a full-blown physics engine and it integrates nicely with their uh, existing systems such as the particle systems that are built in called niagara and it enables you to have destructive environments and create some really cool results but let's get back into this release itself Itself. First off, if you want to go ahead and install this release, fire up the Epic Games Launcher. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and download the Epic Games Launcher, then fire it up. Go into Library, uh, Engine Versions, click Plus, and it will automatically queue up the most recent version, 4.23 in this particular case, and then click Install. It'll download the five or six gigs or whatever it requires, and you are off to the races. Now, once again, you do need to build from source if you want to check out the new Chaos stuff. Now, speaking of which, here we are in the release notes. We're going to jump down, uh, highlight new features again is chaos so the destruction a high performance physics and destruction system available in preview form in beta you do have to build from scratch there are instructions on how to actually go about doing so and I am going to be doing this I actually am doing it in the background as we speak so I will actually have some kind of a video up in the next couple days kind of showcasing chaos in action so uh, I will be covering it on the channel in the future if I can get it to work and play correctly uh, so do stay tuned for that so that is obviously the biggest new feature here. You, know, you can do things to create geometry collections for what can actually be blown up. The really cool thing is you can decide how things are going to split or fracture. Uh, you can also paint weights or connection graphs. So this would be an anchor point, an anchor point, an anchor point, an anchor point. And then the physics system will blow out everything that is marked as blue in the system. It does look like a fun uh, system to work with. So there's uh, fields also, cache simulations. And we've also, as I mentioned earlier, have Niagara um, integration, Niagara being the newest particle system so what it allows you to do is have you know you could have uh, your landscape destroy and then have it fire off a dust particle as it hits the ground so you've got that tight integration into the niagara particle system and that's pretty cool also um uh, Unreal Engine also linked up a video demonstrating the new functionality as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, they've also made improvements to real-time ray tracing, has received many optimizations to stability improvements. Um, including expanded DirectX 12 support for Unreal Engine as a whole, improved the noiser quality for ray traced features, increased ray traced global illumination quality, uh, additional geometry and material support, landscape terrains, a higher kernel instant static, me static meshes and instant static meshes, procedural meshes, uh, transmissions with subsurface materials and world position offset support for landscape and skeletal mesh geometry, multiple bounce reflection fallback. So we've improved support for multiple bounce ray traced reflections by fallback to uh, reflection captures in the scene. This means the intro reflections or reflections inside of reflections are displaying back or when you set a maximum reflection distance will fall back to these raster techniques instead of displaying black. So nice thing is if the ray tracing is kind of getting a little too expensive, it won't just give you a garish black result. Here you can see the various different levels of so single bounce is the one, two is two bounce, and then three is single RTR bounce with, reflect, with the fallback. So the first one here is what the kind of ideal results, oh sorry, second one I guess is ideal results, and third is kind of the fallback. And you'll notice between one and three, not really much going on there. So it gives you a better fallback on the ray tracing side of things. So here we got virtual texturing with this release, virtual texturing beta support, once again, beta support. This is one of those things both Unreal Engine and Epic, or, or Unreal and Unity are doing, is we're getting much earlier access to functionality, but it's in a completely non-usable state often. So um, do be aware, you're not gonna wanna be using any of these beta features in functionality until they're fully released least. Uh, but beta supports enables you to create and use large texture for a lower and more consistent memory footprint at runtime. Uh, you can stream in those virtual textures, runtime virtual texturing, runtime virtual texture, use a virtual texture asset with a volume placed in the level. It works similar to traditional texture maps, except that it's rendered on demand using the GPU at runtime. Uh, new Unreal Insights. This is actually kind of cool. It's for, uh, here you can see tracing. Uh, provides interactive visualization of data processes through the analysis API, providing developers with a unified interface for stats, logs, and metrics from their application, all directly within Unreal Engine itself. Uh, HoloLens 2 native support, 
Uh, so yeah, they, there was HoloLens 2 in the past, but it wasn't full on support. So you have access to the API for unique features such as streaming and native de um, deployment, finger tracking, gesture recognition, meshing, voice input, spatial anchoring, pinning, and more. So if you are doing HoloLens development, you have more access or more complete access to HoloLens' functionality. functionality. Uh, here we can see some of the new stuff that's kind of aimed towards um, cinematics. Uh, so real-time in-camera VFX. And you see the video of it in action. I'm going to gloss over that a little bit because uh, this is more for filmmaking than it is for game development. And there's another area where they've done that as well. Uh, the Live Link plugin and UX improvements. So Live Link plugin now handles more kinds of information, easier to apply synchronized data to scene elements in Unreal. You can now drive character animation, character, sort of cameras, lights, and basic 3D transforms dynamically from other applications and data sources in your production pipeline. Uh, remote control over HTTP. Uh, so you can now send commands to Unreal Engine and Unreal Editor remotely over HTTP. Kind of cool if you're setting it up for that kind of stuff. And then the final thing here we've got is end display warp and blend for curved surfaces. This end display stuff is if you've ever been to a concert and they've got some really cool 3D scenes going on in the background, that's probably what is powering it. So we've got some improvements there. Niagara, as I mentioned earlier on, is their physics system. It was released in 4.21, I think, and a lot of it is still considered beta. Hell, they've even got their improvements flagged as beta, which I'm not sure, entirely certain what that means, but Niagara particles can now be generated by the physics um, simulation and chaos. So as I mentioned earlier on, you could have large chunks fall to the ground and then create a dust cloud as a result. Whenever an object fractures, you can generate smoke and dust as well as tiny fractured bits that enhance the physics simulation's value. There's now a chaos destruction listener, which sends events to the associated particle systems and provides information about chaos interaction events such as break, collision, or trailing. So if you want to integrate your particle system in with various different events that happen during the life cycle of your destruction, you can using this. Uh, GPU simulation improvements. Performance of GPU simulation has been significantly improved, including uh, improved to reduce idle time by providing better data management and more explicit synchronization primitives between compute jobs. GPU support for static and skeletal mesh sampling. Ray trace support for Niagara sprite emitters emitter inheritance, compiling and cooking improvements, uh, improved error reporting, static switches. So now support static switch nodes to reduce compile time and improve runtime performance by dropping instructions and parameters that do not affect the graph's final output. Uh, increased feature parity with Cascade, uh, we've got new platform uh, extensions. This is actually kind of interesting. We've added the concept of platform extensions, which are similar in nature to plugins as they encapsulate all code for an individual platform in a single location, decoupling it from the main engine code. This has changed some fundamental ways that the engine and its build system work and may affect you depending on how much you have modified the engine. So it looks like they're making platform specific features of um, Unreal Engine and extending Unreal Engine more modular in the way they work. So you kind of would have like a Switch platform extension or an Xbox, um, Xbox One or PlayStation 4, etc., as extensions there. Uh, new skin weight profiles, animation streaming. Animations can now be streamed for improved memory usage and memory management, which is particularly useful when playing back animations in long cinematics. Uh, dynamic animation graphs. Dynamic animation graphs provide dynamic switching of subsections of an animation graph via layers, which are separate graphs that can be plugged into the anim graph via layer nodes. And then you have the new open sound control. The open sound control plugin provides a native implementation of the open sound control standard, which provides a common framework for inter-application and inter-machine communication for real-time parameter control over UDP. Uh, wavetable synthesis plugin, we've added a new monophonic, uh, mon monophonic, yeah, I'll go over that, wavetable synthesizer that leverages the curve editor and Unreal Engine to author the real-time Sorry, the time domain wavetables enabling a wide range of sound design capabilities that can be driven by gameplay parameters. Uh, the table index as well as other parameters are controlled from C++ and blueprints. So your audio engineers have a whole lot more power over the ultimate output here, which is kind of an interesting. Uh, CSV to SVG tool. CSV is a new command line tool that helps visualize performance data by building a vector graph file or an SVG file from a CSV file. So basically for making graphs. Sequence curve editor improvements. Um, so so tool mode, toolbar buttons, data filtering, uh, new view modes, new filter menu, multiple framing options, um, new sequencer usability improvements, including uh, stretch shrink frames, filter and search for tracks, adding and editing multiple tracks, blend audio sections on multiple rows, new MG multi-binding, uh, data validity, extensibility. It's been extended to support C++ Blueprint and Python-based rules for asset validation. Some more stuff on the build side of things. Uh, debug camera controller improvements, multiple user editing improvements. This is one of those things that they did in a while. It's basically you can have multiple people working on the same project at the same time. Uh, so reliability has improved, minimized possibility of accidentally losing data. 
And on the topic of accidentally losing data, there is now data on the disaster recovery in experimental. Now keep in mind, the hierarchy goes release, beta, experimental in the world of Unreal Engine. So this is very fragile, I guess you could say at this point. Um, Opt-in disaster recovery system augments the editor's existing autosave to increase your confidence that you'll be able to recover changes you make in your project content, even in the event of an unexpected shutdown. As you work, it records the edits you make using the same transaction system that underlies the multi-user editing system. If the editor shuts down with unsafe changes, then the next time you open your project, you will be shown a list of all the transactions you made since the last save, and you can roll them back. It's kind of like a persistent undo redo. Kind of cool to see that in there. Um, drag and drop to fill array, edit conditions, metadata improvement, editor utility blueprint updates, new unrelated nodes, okay, uh, landscape spline improvements, editor performance improvements, material editor updates, uh, several of them. I'm glossing now because this is getting a bit long. UMG accessibility screen reader support. UMG is their user interface system. So basically it is now compatible. The text box and the labels and so on can now work with various different uh, screen readers such as NVDA and JAWS. Uh, new Wacom tablet support. So if you are working on a painting tool inside of Unreal Engine, for example, you can now use your uh, text, uh, your pressure sensitive Wacom tablet. Uh, UMG widget diffing. Uh, non-destructive landscape editing. Uh, landscape height maps and paint layers can now be edited with non-destructive layers. You can add multiple layers to your landscapes that can be edited independently from each other. Place interactive actors with the foliage tool. Uh, HDRI backdrop actor. Dual height fog for exponential height fog. Dynamic shadow bias improvements. Uh, new pre-skinned local balance material expression. Storing custom per primitive data from material expression shading model. <sighs> okay. Uh, render graph, uh, render dependency graph, new composure improvements, um, kind of getting into the weeds for this stuff now, new codecs, uh, panoramic capture, and then a bunch of the SDKs have been updated, and we are at the end. Oh my goodness, there is a lot in there. Now, one thing that's interesting here is with the release of uh, Unreal Engine 4.23, Matinee is no longer supported, it will be removed. Um, so you now are supposed to use Sequencer for that kind of stuff instead of Matinee. Um, the VR editor... VR Mesh Editor at GDC 2017 is no longer supported and will be removed. Um, HTML5 platform support will be migrated to GitHub as a community-supported platform extension. So again, that's kind of the cool thing about making those platforms modular in their approach. Um, and iOS 10 support has been removed, so you got to use iOS 11. So that's kind of the extent of this update. There is a heck of a lot in there. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, come back in a bit, and I will definitely have something up on Chaos. I'm playing with it now as it's building. So hopefully there's something exciting to be shown there. But as you can see, there is an absolute ton in this release. Nothing really stand out beyond chaos chaos is definitely the big new feature here but there's definitely some stuff to be excited about it's a, it's a substantial release for sure so anyways that's where we are at is there a feature in there that really stands out to you are you excited to check out chaos or you just don't give a damn about unreal engine in which case i'm kind of shocked you're still here to be honest but anyways uh let me know what you think of this release unreal engine in general and uh yeah i will talk to you all later goodbye